And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Letter Jam. Now, the last word game from CGE Codename certainly took the world by storm. It became one of the most popular party games, word games, that exists. Well, Letter Jam is their next entry into that. This is a cooperative game where everyone is trying to guess words that they have. You're using a little bit of Scrabble, a little bit of Boggle, a little bit of Word Jam, and some deductive reasoning, and putting that together. Sounds complicated, and in fact, the game looks complicated. It's not quite, though. Let me show you how it plays. This game is a cooperative game in which each person is trying to guess a five letter word. Actually, it could be any length letter word. You can make it three or four if you want an easier game, or six or seven if you want a hard game. But players are going to have like the deck, give them a part of the deck. And I'm going to make a word for the person to my left. A uh, five letter word here. Hey, this is pretty convenient. I can make them the word scare, S C A R E. So I'll take these and I'm going to shuffle these letters and I'm going to put them in front of that person. So everyone is going to have letters that are placed in front of them, five letters, and they'll be in a row neatly, uh, but for purposes of me showing it on this video, I'm just going to condense it a little bit. Each person is going to take the first letter in the line in front of them and put it face up so everybody but them can see it. So you're going to play with six players if you are playing a four-player game. So, for example, I have this set up to show a four-player game. Two of these are basically NPCs. They just have a pile of letters there, and we put a clue token next to them. And then I got a word in front of me, and I don't know what this letter is. In this case, it's L, but I don't know that. And I am trying to help everyone else guess their letters, and they are going to try to help me guess mine. There's a card in the middle that shows clue tokens. This card's going to change based on the number of players in the game. This would be a six player, a two to three player, a five player. And so on my on, on each turn, anybody can give a clue. And when you give your first clue, you take a red token. After that, you take green tokens. This green token can't be taken until all the red tokens are taken. So everybody has to give at least one clue, or you're, or you're not going to get this extra clue here. If you go through all the cards over here, then you'll get extra clues from the players who aren't involved in the game. At this point, everybody is looking around at the letters that they can see, trying to think of a word that will help other people guess their letters. So you can talk back and forth, and I might say, hey, look, I have a one, two, three, four, five, six letter word. Um, and it's going to help three of the players in the game. So people are like, all right, give us your word. So when I do this, I put the, the these tokens in front of it. So I put a one there, a two there, a three here. This is a wild letter and I can use this multiple times but it have to be the same letter. A four there, a five there showing that I'm using that one there twice and a six there. I lied. It actually helps four players. So now this player for example, the number four player is going to, he doesn't know that he has the letter I. So on his sheet here he's going to say okay I know the first letter is an L, second letter is an O, third letter is a who knows what, fourth letter is me, I don't know what that one is either, the fifth letter is another O, and the sixth letter is an N. And so he's saying, okay, what word here, what letters, okay, this is the letter that he has, that's the one he needs to carry, care about. Okay, so he's going to slowly try to figure it out. By the way, the word is lotion. So he might say, well, I usually comes before I-O-N, so maybe I is there, so my first letter might be an I or whatever. The other players, so maybe player, you know, the, the uh, player who has the O, he doesn't know any of his, so he has this, and he doesn't know this T, and then he knows the I, and then he knows he's there, and then he sees an N. That's not very much help at all, possibly, but he's thinking, well, O works well here, because O and O, so lo, yen, oh, he might get the word lotion. And if he does so, he's like, oh, I'm definitely O. I know I'm O. So when he does that, He'll put his down and then put his next letter up. If you think you know your, your letter, you'll put it down and pick up the next one. Now, in this case, this is actually a, an NPC player, but for, for purpose of this, pretend that that's a six player. 
And each player who thinks they know the letter can put it down. And you're going to want to do that because you want to figure out the rest of your letters. And as time goes by, you'll put your letter down and you'll put the next one up and people are going to give clues back and forth. And of course, I can't give all the clues because I need to figure out what my letters are too. So I need to listen to other people's clues. And you just keep going till you run out of clues or till everyone puts their letters down. Once they do, players are going to take their letters. So, let, you know, I might have down here and I might have S, G, E, T, I, I'm sorry, R, G, E, T, I, and I look there and go, oh, that's tiger, okay? So then I, so then I slowly rearrange my letters in front of me, and then everyone t makes a big reveal, one at a time, flipping over each of their letters, and if it's a word, even if it's not the word you were trying to make, you get it. So in this case, it was scare, right? So S, C, A, R, E, if they turn those over and it shows the word scare, boom, they got their word correct. And then you go on to the next person. Once you do that, you will then score. There's a weird scoring method, which I'm actually not even going to go into here. You get a certain number of points for each letter correct, and if you get the whole word correct, and for how many clues you use, and whatever. I just play to see how many people get their words correct, and then you can start another game. But that is generally how you play. The pride and joy of the components here are these chips. I love these poker chips. These are fantastic. If they sold these in sets, I would get them. I don't know what for. Um, but I love the fruit backgrounds for them. This is fantastic. Uh, it's really cool. The letters themselves are very easy to see. It has a little bit of gloss in the back here. You can see maybe the shine there a little bit. That's neat. Um, they're easy to see. There's QR code type stuff here. If you can't think of words, you can scan these and it will give you five letter words or however many letter words you want. The game also comes with pencils and a sharpener, which you can see I haven't used yet, but you can do those. And then of course these little red and green discs, which were left over from other games from CG. Uh, they, you know, it's not great components, but it's a word game and the poker chips are great. These sheets are also pretty handy. You can flip them down. It shows you what letters are in the game. There's no J, Q, V, X, or Z in the game at all. And this is a pretty good way uh, for working out letters. Let me see if I have, here's one from an actual game. We're going through trying to figure out the letters and then figuring out the word down here as time goes by. Now honestly, there's parts of this game that I honestly think are, are silliness. I think the scoring itself is silliness at the end. It's just how many people got their words right? That's, I and mean, in fact, I think a lot of people, and I'm going to be one of them, will ignore scoring. I really don't, it seems kind of silly. And even the clues themselves in the middle, I get that there's the red flower, and it's there, to, I guess, for theming or whatever. You take a clue, and then everyone has to give one clue. But the fact is, if I never give a clue, I'm probably not helping the team anyway. And it just seems like the stilted thing, just give us a certain number of clues. It just felt like parts of the game were made a little more complicated than they needed to be. That being said, the game itself is my, pardon the expression, my jam. I really like it. The mixing of the word is fine, and I think some people, my wife, for example, loves mixing, you know, trying to figure out, you know, word jumbles. But for me, trying to figure out the missing letters and using the clues that people give me, and so if you give me the word L space N E, and I'm like, well, that could be lane, or it could be line, but, it's probably one of those two. So now I know that that letter is an A or an I. And I could just drop my letter now and go to the next one, assuming that later on, based on the final five letters that I get, I'll be able to figure out if it's an A or an I. Or I might want one more clue. And I think that part of the game is just fascinating to me. And it has worked really well. Everyone that I've shown this game to well, almost everyone has liked it. It's a little heady for some, and it certainly doesn't have that whole, hey, everyone can play thing that Codenames does a little bit. This is definitely a thinkier game, but because it's thinkier, I like it. It's not so much about knowing a vast vocabulary of words, although that certainly helps. It's more about knowing the words that will help the most people and trying to give clever clues that make it so that, hey, you know, your, your letter is definitely this. There have been words that I've given people, and I'm like, well, they're definitely going to figure it out from there. And then after I give them the word, I'm like, oh, like four letters could have gone in that slot. I didn't help them much at all. And I feel bad about that. I'm like, all right, I've got to give them a better clue next time to narrow it down. 
because you don't have as many. I mean, you have way fewer clues than you think you do, and you need to get five letters per player or six or seven. I have not tried six or seven. Five feels like a perfectly valid challenge. And even at the end, I've seen this happen where someone mixed up their word a little bit, but it still spat out a word. Boom! That's just hilarious fun. And that, that's just a neat thing, too. But it, you also need to keep track of which letters where. So at the end, when you make your word, you're like, oh, I have the right word, but the letters were in the wrong order. Overall, this game feels unique and different. It offers something cool to the genre. Yes, there's a little bit of superfluous nonsense that they threw in here, and I think they could have packaged it slightly better for people, and I don't know that the cover is going to sell the game at all, Letter Jam, but overall, a cooperative, fun word experience that scales pretty well, too. Having those other letters, when you have uh, letters from the non-player characters, because you always play with six, every time you use one of those letters in a word, it comes down and you put up the next letter, and if you go through their whole pile, you'll get an extra clue. That works really well. That part I, I thought was nice. So overall, I thought it was very enjoyable. I, I personally really think it's a lot of fun for me. Letter Jam. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.